hello, hello. I'm just setting up my Just bear with me a second, guys. I'm just doing the technology thing where it is. All right. Okay, how are we all today? Sorry, I'm just waiting for a couple of people to tune in. And, oh God, you can see an awful lot of me there, sorry. Um, but I wanna get the whole 12 by 12 page in for the time being um how are we how's your afternoon going um i'll have to hold my stomach in and hold my boobs in now oh sorry um <laughs> so what i want to do today as part of the craft alive great australian craft show i would like to create for you and show you how to create a really simple and easy masculine scrapbook page using watercolors, um, a couple of stamps. I have done some die cutting already um, using some paper rose cogs, the dies. Um, and yeah, just talk you through how to create something that is not too difficult and suitable for absolutely everyone. So for those of you just tuning in for the first time, welcome. And uh, the way that I create is I'm just gonna waffle on and let you watch and if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments and hopefully i'll see them come up um, if you've got comments that are coming across on the bottom of your device and you can't see what's happening from about here onwards if you just swipe them across um, they'll disappear so you'll see a full picture all right so i'm going to get started uh, i had a bit of an idea in mind to use the watercolors that i currently have on special as well as my super fancy watercolors that I've got here and that are also available online, which are the Ganzai Tambi watercolors. Um, and I'll talk about these in a, in a little bit of a, a, little bit of a mo what, moment's time. But what I'm gonna do to start with is I'm going to grab my photo um, so I'm doing a masculine page this time I've done some girly bright pages so I thought it was about time that I created something a bit more masculine so I've got a photo of Trev here uh, and as you can see this photo he is on this side of the photograph he's orientated this way so that means the photo when I put it on the page needs to be on this side of the page I can't put it on this side because it's negative body language. He's facing outside of the page. I don't want his back to the to the inside. It is going to look a lot nicer if we put it on this area here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a pencil and I'm gonna do a bit of a square here where my photo is going to go. So I know that this is where it's, um, where I want it to sit as the finished product and I can work around this area. Uh, so there's a couple of things I can do to start with. Um, today I received a delivery of paper rose stencils. I think most of you saw that that just went up online. Um, this is a bit of an idea on some of the new ones that were coming in. I could add these crosses to the background uh, as a bit of, to add a bit of interest using texture paste or gesso or modeling paste that would look amazing and the cogs would also look amazing through a stencil so stencils are currently 15 percent off uh, across my store so but what i decided to do instead is i'm going to do some stamping so i've got my alphabet stamp here that i'm going to use i've got a grid texture stamp that i'm going to use and i've got some script as well so we need to use black archival ink because black archival ink is not going to run with water and I'm going to be adding water to this project. So I can pop my, my photograph aside. Um, so these, are, these two are Kaisercraft 
stamps and these are both available in line mind you there's a different version of the grid available online um, but you get the gist uh, and this is the script stamp now this one I've actually cut my script stand script stamp in half because I don't need it to be that big but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work in this section here so in fact I might zoom up a little or a lot whoops sorry hang on oh god now it won't move <sighs> gotta love technology but that's looking pretty good okay so what I'm going to do is add some stamping in and around this section here around where my photograph is going to go so the black archival ink is that permanent ink that as we all know is going to not run when we add water to it now as you can see I'm not using a acrylic block because I don't want sharp straight edges I like the flexibility of being able to just press straight down on like this and it is working beautifully so I'm also off stamping so I'm using the gray the grayness of the ink for lack of a better term I guess um, and where I've got a straight line here, where I've just gone down too straight, I can now go in and just lift up the edge of my stamp to create something not so straight. Uh, not, not inking it every time gives a really good impression of um, like a dirty stamp look. So that's kind of what we're looking at doing there. Next thing I'm going to do is, oh, got a bit of a visitor on my page there. Uh, I'm going to add a few of these numbers. So the numbers again, I get, I'm not using a, an acrylic block. I'm just going to pop them on like so, so that I end up with a partial. That is what I'm after. I'm actually going to be adding some water, like it's some adding colour over the top of this, and it's going to disappear into the background anyway. But the whole idea is that I get this mixed up sort of look. So, all right. Sorry, guys, I'm just going to zoom that back out a bit if I can. And it's just going to involve me taking the camera out of the tripod. Sorry. Just let me have a fiddle around with this. Oh, nothing is easy today, I swear. There we go. Sorry about that. And I think we're back. Sorry about that, guys. Me and technology are not friends at the moment. Okay. So you can kind of see that I'm creating... And I'm not doing it too dark. I don't want it too dark. I want a nice, um, even sort of look to it. All right. So I'm just going to pop those aside. I'm not going to add the grid one just yet. I'm going to have a bit of a play with my watercolours um, in a moment. But I want to build some texture into the background. So last night, I sat and cut out a whole heap of cogs on white cardstock and so these are the paper rose cogs uh, in dies and these are fantastic for, for masculine projects so what I did is some of them have got double-sided tape on the back of them already I was a bit tricky and popped some double-sided tape on them but I want to now stick these over the top and and run them down my page i've got a huge range of different ones here different sizes different shapes different shapes they're all cogs but you know what i mean and i'm just going to whack them down here like those so like i mentioned some of them uh, i used double-sided tape 
put it on the back of my cardstock and then ran it through the um, Gemini machine. But I just want to layer up some of these cogs. And this is where it helps to do the guide for where my photograph is going to go as well. Because I didn't want all of... I don't want to cover up this area here uh, if I make something awesome there. I'm not going to see it, so why create underneath it? And I think I've just about used up all of my pre-taped ones. I had the idea to tape about, you know, or after running two sets through. So I have to add some glue to these guys. So there's no magic trick to die cutting. Everybody has got different die cutting machines. I have a Gemini, uh, which is the electronic die cutting machine and I love it. It's fantastic when I have to create things for kits and creating, um, hey Christine, um, creating things for kits and it's, it's late, I'm lazy, so I'm more than happy to um, use an electronic machine. So, but these, these dies are fantastic for, for masculine projects. So, all right, so while I'm just whipping through and doing this, most of you know, online this weekend as part of the Great Australian Craft Show is uh, I've got 15% off stamps and stencils, papers and paper pads and uh, Lindy's Gang products as well. I've also got 15% off. Plus I also have 20% off Boom Gel if any of you are... Oh, that one's got tape on it, Ripper. Um, if any of you are into paint pouring, that option is there as well. Um, what else have I got on special? Oh, and on the website, nataliemay.com.au, you will find a tab in the menu called Show Specials. Now, I have added to that today a couple of times. So there's some uh, paper packs in there that are greatly discounted. <laughs> we'll just say that. Uh, there are some, what else is there in there? Oh, Dina Wakely Lemon, which is the yellow acrylic paint. If you need some of that, now's your time to stock up. Throw that in with your next order because they are in there for five bucks instead of six fifty. Um, I may or may not have had a little ordering issue with those. Um, so you can kind of see what's happening here. I'm creating a bit of a collage of cogs. And that one's going to go about there. And I'm filling, I know that I'm going over the top of my stamping, but the idea is, is the stamping's going to disappear into the background. Uh, the stamping is, is all about creating the background, not about... The hero. The hero is going to be the photograph. Nothing more than that. Um, so yes. Um, and for those of you as well who have already placed an order, thank you so very much for your support. You know how much I appreciate you guys. Um, I, oh, look at that. I put glue on it and it had a back on it. Um, you know how much I appreciate you guys. Thank you very, very much. Uh, but I, if you want to do a second order and you see something in my little live Facebooks and you go, oh man, but I've already placed an order. I don't want to pay for postage again. Yep, fair enough. Uh, just put pick up instead of paying for postage and I will add it to your previous order. So then that way you're only paying postage once and... You're not wasting your money. Um, all right, so you can see that I'm kind of building here. My photograph is going to go there. I've got a gap. I've got a gap. I've got a gap there. So the glue that I'm using, this is the puzzle glue from Poland. Um, 
I've talked about this numerous times. It is my favorite glue to use because it has got a really fine nozzle and it just, just works a treat. It's really easy to use. I have um, a little bit goes a really, really long way. You can see that I'm not putting glue on the entire area. Not necessary. Who can be bothered with that? Um, but hey, that works for me. Happy to leave a gap there. Happy to leave a gap there. All right, so I'm just going to pop those aside. Pop those aside. Stick, 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 stick. And now I'm going to talk to you about watercolours. Okay. So there's lots, lots and lots and lots and lots of different watercolours available on the market. Um, there are high quality ones. There are not so high quality ones. There are plenty of options for for you to use. So I have on special at the moment, and there's still a couple to, couple left on the shelf. These are the Koanor, which I know I'm saying that wrong. Um, watercolors. These. This is a twelve set, and this is usually. I think they're usually $14.95 and I've got them out for 10 bucks. Um, and they're super bright. These are the little swatches that I did yesterday and they are just ridiculously bright. So pretty good value for money, a little travel set um, and they just untwist like so and there you go. So I'm going to be using this palette today, which is the brown side. The other watercolors that I've got here, these are the Japanese Ganzai Tambi watercolors. This is an investment set. These are my absolute favorite, favorite, favorites. I have been using this set for a couple of years and I absolutely love them but what I do love is they've got some they've got three metallic colors in there as well and they've got lots of these like gorgeous shades of green gorgeous cool colors gorgeous warm colors gorgeous neutrals so these are the ones that I'm going to be um, I'm going to be using both sets to show you how to do this now like I said this is an investment set these are not a budget set of watercolors uh, so I'm going to be using both sets to show you that you can mix them together as well um, the brush that I'm using I have got a couple of different paint brushes in fact I have got a plethora of plethora of paint brushes here you could use a, a water brush which I have some of those on special uh, I have some budget Montmartre brushes here available but I want to be using a, a round paintbrush for today and a round paintbrush is one that is like this. So it's got a, um, a round tip and it's quite a soft paintbrush for watercolouring. It's not a stiff brush and it's not a wide brush like that. Um, I really want a, something that's going to hold lots of colour. What else do I need to have handy when I'm watercolouring? I need paper towel handy. I also need a water spray bottle, which is one of these. I like the trigger ones. I've got a couple of different ones available online. The reason being, you need to water spray them. You need to wet them first before you start, just to get them nice and juicy. Juicy, juicy. All right, let's do this. So. Because I am messy, I am going to use some paper towel to mask off this side of my project because I know what I'm going to do. I end up with stuff everywhere um, because I'm doing too many things at once because that's what we do. So what I'm going to do is first of all, test my colors. No matter what I am doing, whether I work with watercolors or Lindy's or anything at all, I always test my colors so I know what is in front of me. Make sure that this is the color that I want. 
And yes, it is. It's a beautiful brown. This color here, I think, is the black. Yep, perfect. Don't know what that one is. Blue. I don't want to use blue. So I'm going to make sure that that one is not facing me. I really like this gray. So I'm going to be using a little bit of that as well. Um, so I've got those sitting there. And then with this palette here, I've got this lovely red brown, which is nice. This more chocolate brown. Yeah, baby, look at that. What's this color? Black. Oh, just off camera here, I've got my water palette. Um, this is a beautiful bronze. And this one is the old gold. So I might pop a little bit of that blue in there because I don't mind that. Uh, this is a really nice blue on this one here. So that gives me an idea in front of me before I start so I don't be surprised about what the colours look like. So what I'm going to do is just make a bit of a start and I'm going to paint over the top of these using numerous browns and I'm just going to use lots of water and spread it around. Which one was the brown? That one. Beautiful. And I can build all of these layers of browns together. So it's not brain surgery. It's not difficult. It's just taking a little bit of, whoops, that's too much black. Um, it's just taking a bit of your creativity and turning it into something that works. So you can see that red looks kind of cool. So I want to use a little bit of that red, but I don't want to use too much. And I just want to let that watercolor paint just pull in and around those die cut cogs. So now I'm just adding in a little bit of this gray and I don't want to cover them all up. I want to leave some showing white. Do I have these beautiful watercolors in stock? The big set or the little set, Kerri Ann? Um, if you have a look on the website under the heading watercolors, you should find a combination of quite a few different brands there. I do also stock some uh, called Paper Fashion and they are bought out by the same company as the Vicky Booten products. They are an American Crafts product that is absolutely gorgeous. They are also very good quality. I don't have a set open at the moment because I just can't have them all open. Like seriously, how many do I need? Uh, but you kind of, you know, any of the... I've got into the habit, the best way to say it is, I've got into the habit over the years of only stocking and recommending products that I would actually use. If there is something in my shop that I sell, there is a very good chance that I would actually use it, have already used it, or, you know, I wouldn't sell it if I don't recommend it. Hey, Tracy, how are you, babe? Um, welcome to my, my painty masculine layout mess that I'm kind of playing with here. So you can see as I'm going, I'm just building up color. I'm, I'm building colors, I'm layering colors over the top of each other. I don't want to go too much into this white space here. So this is essentially just dirty paint water. I'm just going to build that down and I'm going to use my paper towel just to dab a little off, so then it just becomes like a shade rather than a, a solid colour of brown. This area here, we know this is where the photo is going to be, so it doesn't matter if I go in there to test my colours first. And I haven't bothered putting any of these beautiful um, shimmery ones on as yet. So I'm just going to get in there. So yeah, um, as for the watercolours on the website, um, if I stock them, I recommend them. Simple as that. I'm not going to sell you rubbish. That's that's not how I work. Uh, most of you know that I have worked in a scrapbook shop here in Adelaide. I've worked there for 13 years. I have seen all the products come in and out. I have a 
have a very good understanding of good quality products, what works, what doesn't. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to sell your crap stuff. Um, and I should hope that if you ever do receive something that you're not happy with, that you give me a buzz. But you know, the bottom line is you get what you pay for. Um, handbag, leather handbag, vinyl handbag, we know which is going to last longer and which is going to be better quality, straight up. So uh, most of you who do know me personally <laughs> know that I have a real um, no bullshit way of doing business and um, running my life. And I think, and teaching as well. Um, this is this is as good as it gets with me, guys. Sorry, swearing and all. Um, but the the whole concept is is to you know tell it how it is. Don't mess around with the small stuff anymore. Just get into life. So you can see how this is all starting to come on. And I'm just using some of this grey now. And the grey is is giving me a lovely milky tone. Um, I want a little bit of a darker colour in there. I really like the, the pops of red coming out. Um, okay. Beautiful. All right. And go into there. Then I'm just going to use the dirty brush water again to blend over the top. Use some of this slightly darker here. So I could also do this. It's exactly the same technique with Lindy's Stamp Gang products. So the Magicals. I could do this with sprays. I could do this with um, any sort of paints and sprays. Like I said, it's about getting the colour on there. I'm, um, I'm actually just thinking, I'll put a little bit around this side here. Let's have a look and see where our photo is going to sit. Uh, photo is going to sit about there. So yeah, I do need a little bit more colour on that side. Um, so yeah, the, the, the whole technique is not difficult. Um, it's just, and this would work with like lots of other die cuts as well. So if you had other die cuts such as flowers or letters or shapes or words, this technique would work really, really well. Uh, I just cut them out using uh, standard Kaisercraft cardstock, nothing at all special. Uh, in fact, we all know how unspecial, I mean, it's a thinner paper quality, uh, the, the Kaisercraft, it's not super thick. So now I'm just dabbing this off with a paper towel. So just to speed up some of the drying time. And it's actually toning it down a little, which works for me. Uh, and looking pretty good. So, next thing I wanna do is add some splatters. Um, splatters are important for some dimension. And I'm going to go with a thinner paintbrush this time and get myself some clean water there. All right, so what color splatters do I go for? Something a little bit darker. I like this color here. I like some of this uh, deeper black. So I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with like a, a brown. But what I would like to do, uh, and I can't really do it on, it's not gonna show up very well on camera, but in the lid of this set, um, Carrie ann I do believe you you definitely do deserve some of those paints love just reading through the comments um, okay so what I like to do here is you can make up a little wash of color and you can mix your own colors in the lids so if you just excuse my purple hands um, so I have made a little wash of a few different colors here and it's quite a juicy little puddle and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some splatters. So anyone who used to be a smoker will be awesome at this. Um, <laughs> I used to be an awesome smoker, but I'm not anymore. Uh, but it's a smoker's tap. But I'm still masking off that area because I still want a little bit of white space. And I want some over here. 
and I'm just flicking it on and off. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I just wanna dry that off just a little bit, and then I'm gonna add some of that lovely gold and bronze. So that's looking pretty good. Dry, dry, dry. So one thing I did mention um, very early on in the piece is that the 12 by 12 in the background is a, I'm using a um, marshmallow cardstock. So it is a heavier duty cardstock. It is not a, a lightweight cardstock. All right. So now I'm using out of the out of the Ganzai Tambis, these little gems here, one, two, three, they are the metallics. So you can actually buy them, and I could probably order some in, and I think Colour Blast do them, a set of gold. So I am using this gorgeous little number here. And I'm just going to put a, a couple of puddles around of that. It can be very strong, so I'm not wanting to put too much. I just want to, I'm just, you can see I'm just lightly, lightly, light, lightly brushing my brush over it. Okay. And then just so it's not too strong, spreading it out with my finger as well. Sorry, I've got a, a dog in here at the moment and he is snoring his little head off. Mr. Ollie is having a nice old snore next to me. Um, all right. So hopefully you can't hear him. All right. Yes, every, anybody who knows I've got a couple of very funny, naughty little bulldogs who are... It's just absolutely hysterical little dogs. So, all right. Well, they're not little dogs. They're big, fat, full of life dogs. All right. So, coming together quite nicely. Just spreading around some of that gold. And I'm going to add some splatters as well. So, yeah. The splatters are something that do take a little practice. I know that not everybody is good at them. Um, something else that you can do if you're not is grab another paintbrush and you can tap it off that way to get some splatters. Uh, so I tend to just do it like that because that's what works for me. What do you have, Carrie Ann? A blue heel across Great, da Great Dane. Holy hell. Well, that would be one fine combination of animal, wouldn't it? All right. That's looking pretty good. So, what am I going to do now? So my photo is going to sit here. Yeah, I don't mind that. What I don't like is this bit down here. This is me just being fussy now. Now Ollie wants to go outside. Ollie, no, you can wait, mate. Um, so what I've got here is there's a... I need to create a bit of a wash. I need to create more of a, a, a dirty... A dirty wash rather than a straight line a dirty paint wash gives a new tone of color and it just creates that's better something a little bit softer same as over here so excellent that'll do stop fluffing around I'll be sitting here in an hour's time still doing it okay background done not overly complicated simple and effective just lots of Lots of layering up of shades of brown. So I'm just going to pop those aside. The photograph that I have got here of Trev, I'm going to mount that onto some cardboard rather than use foam tape. Foam tape will work, but as most of you know, I can't find anything on my desk. So cardboard wins and double-sided tape. 
on that, wrap it around, wrap it around, wrap it around, wrap it around. Peel the back off. Um, this, because this has got all of this going on in the background, I don't need to over complicate it with more embellishments. Um, I personally scrapbook to, I scrapbook my favourite photographs. I don't scrapbook every single moment that's going on in my life because I don't have enough hours in the day. I still print my photos uh, professionally at Harvey Norman. I go there because they are one of the few places that still do a wet printing, chemical printing. Oh God, I've just got to let the dog out, hang on. Sorry. Um, so I still use a professional printer because they are archival and they feel nice and they look nice and the quality is nice. I do not like to use a um, somewhere that does dry printing like Officeworks here in Australia or Big W or Kmart. Um, for printing, I do my printing online, send it in and then have it sent out to me if I can't get in there to do it uh, but Harvey Norman is my go-to so okay so I have a roll of brown string here and I want to create a bit of a circle uh, as an embellishment on my page that is going to go around my photograph um, but yeah so for me like I said I photograph oh sorry I scrapbook my favorite photos rather than creating every single, um, you know, scrapbooking the whole lot. So all of my photos will tell a story and all of my scrapbook pages will tell a story and I will add journaling to them once they are no longer on display for the public. Um, I'm just going to grab a stapler, hold that thought. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I, I tend to, if you see why I quite often use a, a the different photo every now and again, or I, I use the same photo that I used a year ago, it's because every time I look at it, it brings up a different emotion. Um, I am dead set against using photos from Pinterest and magazines and stuff like that to put on your scrapbook layouts. I think that defeats the purpose of scrapbooking, personally. Um, if you don't want your story told and um, you don't want people to see your photo, then cover it up before you publish it. <laughs> um, does that make sense? I know it's a bit of a bold sort of statement to say that because a lot of people do use stock images um, and that's fine, but I... I don't. Not my thing. Um, Annette, you agree with me on that one? Yeah, sorry. Um, okay, so moving on. Off my high horse. Um, string. Just wrapped it around in a circle. Couple of staples. And in a moment, I'll stick that down. Um, but I'm going to add some more cardboard here so that it sits up a little higher. And... Before I stick down my string, I want my photograph to go on like so. And now I can just add a touch of glue to secure my string. I could also use a stapler to secure my string. Uh, I don't uh, my long arm stapler is over in my scrapbooking trolley on the other side of the room so I'm not going to do that and I would prefer to staple it on um, because staples make a great embellishment as well so overlapping a little bit over the photograph 
Um, but the whole thing has to be about this photo and the emotion and the feeling that this photo gives me. Uh, so there you go. All right, that works for me for the time being. One other thing that I would need to do is add a title. Uh, what have I got here? Um, I have some die cut words that I cut out from uh, using paper rose dies and that is, so this is the hay die. So it's a two piece die. I've actually got these on order and coming in. They should be in probably Tuesday. Um, so if you would like one, I think they're awesome. But if you would like one, let me know and I can pop one aside. You just need to flick me a message. And there's also a hello as well. So, um, but that's what I've cut there. So I'm just going to paint that, stick it to that. Oh, hey there, Vicky. So what colour do I paint that? I've got to paint it black. Um, because I want it to stand out. So, and I'm going to paint it before I stick it on because I'm never going to get it right if I um, never line it up properly and keep it nice and neat. And I can overpaint on here. Okie dokie. So, going on like this. Super technical. Like, seriously, why are we overthinking it? Because that's what we do. And I'm just grabbing a little bit of brown and I'm just putting a little bit of brown over the top so it's got like a, a dirty two-tone look to it. Hit it with the heat gun. And then I'm going to stick that down. Right, that's dry enough for me. No patience. And while that is upside down, pop some glue on. How am I doing for time? Oh, cool. 40 minutes. 40 minutes for a scrapbook layout. Okay, so yes, admittedly, I had pre-cut some of those. Um, I don't know, pre-cut all of those cogs. But it shouldn't be difficult. All right, let's get that baby... Lined up here without swearing. Right, that one stick, stick, stick. Oh, sh rats. Stick. Hey, Maureen, how are you, babe? I miss you. I'm going to do a Copic class soon. I'm going to set a date for a Copic class so I can have all of you guys come back and see me. I miss everybody. This corona stuff is doing my head in. I miss my people. But that's what we have to do. Um, okay, I've missed a bit here. There's a gap there, so I'm gonna pop some paint on there. All right. Radio. what do we do with that? We need to foam tape it. Um, so I've got some 12 mil foam tape from Express It, good Australian company. Let's support Australian companies. I do have a couple of favorite American companies. Yes, but I do also support Australian companies first and foremost. Just wanna dry that bit off there so I don't tip it upside down and lose it. Right, get that on there. Hello would be a fab dye to have. Yeah, it is. It's a really, really nice dye, actually, Annette. That's it there. So I do love that it layers up. They make beautiful cards. So if you if you decide that you want one, just, just flick me a message and I'll pop one aside. I like to make sure that uh, they're all coming in and they've got them in my hot little hands and I have them in front of me before I put them on the website. Nothing irks me more than not having them in my hot little hands. And selling you something that I don't have in stock because that bugs me to no end. Um, so yes, flip me a message. 
if you do. Okay, so what I want to do is I need to put my title somewhere. So it's not going to go up here in my white space. It's not going to go down over here. Um, I want it to sit where I have created this little outputting area here. Outputting area. Um, this little... This bit. God, I'm good with words today. So I'm going to whack that there and that's stuck down good. And what I will do is when I turn the camera off, I will just do a little sentence in here. Um, so before I do that, I've got to use my pinch, uh, pilot drawing pen, outputting area. Don't laugh at me, woman. You come up with a better word when you're under, under pressure to, to come up with all the fancy correct terminology. Um, <laughs> so I want to do, because I've got black stamping, which is what we started off with, and you can still see it in the background, I have to add some black edging. It needs a bit of a frame. So that's where I will draw this, this line. And it finishes off the page nicely. Really, really like that page. How is Trev and the teenager, Tina? Uh, well, they've both left the house today. So Trevor's head cold. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, Trevor and Jessica, my husband and my daughter, were off sick yesterday. Jessica's 17. Um, and she was, she was day two home with a head cold. Um, and Trevor... Trevor doesn't take time off, but it's policy at the moment, of course, that if there's any sort of illness, that they have to go home. So he was um, he was home all day yesterday with a head cold as well. Bless him. Um, so they have gone back to the real world today, um, which I am most grateful for because I have cleaned up the house done the things, done some washing. I've been up since six, got something in the slow cooker. It's all happening. Um, and I might just scribble while I'm on here. Right. Hey, my favorite person, I love heart. All right, done. So, there we go. I'm going to bring that up to camera, hopefully, and we'll have a bit of a look. Hopefully you can see that on screen. So you can see all those lovely shades, shades of brown, just brown, just boring brown. And that stamping in the background is still there. But it's all about the layers. And there is the title. Um... The string that just adds that little bit of textural element to it. And we're good to go. So just to recap, what we did is used a couple of stamps first on the cardstock. So we used a Kazercraft uh, script stamp. And, oh, I didn't end up using that one. Um, Kazercraft script stamp. And I actually just cut it in half because I'm lazy. Uh, I used the... Uh, alpha stamp that I designed with paper rose. Uh, so these are currently online at 15% off, which is awesome for you guys. Um, I also used the cogs dies from paper rose, which are available online. Um, FYI, what this here is, it's a border. So it can cut an awesome border in this, um, cog key sort of thing which goes on uh which is amazing like to do edges of your layouts and bits and pieces so uh i used those i also used the um Koenor watercolors so if there's any of those left online um they are super pigmented watercolors and then i used these bad boys these are my Ganzai Tambi watercolours. So these are the ones that have got the gold and the silver and I used just these three colours in here. So 
These are your investment set, but this technique, you could use any set of watercolors at all. Um, so that's it from me for today. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Um, nataliemay.com.au. Uh, I'm packing orders on Sunday, so if you have placed an order and you want to add to your order, um, first of all, thank you, very grateful. And second of all, um, yeah, it gives you the opportunity to only pay postage once. I'll end up paying a fortune for your packages, but that's okay. The big issues. Um, so I will put a photograph up of this finished layout with a, a link to the products that we used. And I reckon I might pop back tonight and give you a little bit of a tour of, of some of my favourite things in the shop at the moment. Um, pop a bit of lippy on and give you a little FaceTime. What do you reckon? Have a glass of wine and have a bit of a chat. So um, love to all of you. Stay safe. Wash your hands and chat soon.